So there seems to be a crash out right now in the Tekken 8 community and this comes a few days just after the Tekken talk stream that gave us an overall look of what's coming in the next update and just like the future of the game. This live stream was received with like overall positivity but of course not everyone was happy with what was talked about and what was announced. Like a lot of people just seem to be frustrated with Tekken 8 and like why is that the case like what's going on this game is not even one year old and already there is so much controversy surrounding Tekken 8. On Twitter a lot of pro players have been posting recently about the frustrations of this game and it just begs the question man like what's happening with Tekken 8 what is going on now I've made a video on this a couple of times but I think right now things are escalating like it's getting worse than it's ever been and it kind of worries me in a sense so for example we have a pro harang player here by the name of age he recently made a post of not really having anything to do after reaching the max rank of taken sorry of god of destruction in ranked yeah like he's maxed out the points and now there's, there's nothing else to do now of course you would think okay just play another character get another character to god but there are some people that don't really play multiple characters in fighting games. They are like character loyalists and specialists. And I think this applies to H as well. This, this man is like legitimately just a Horang main. And this applies to a lot of people. And I kind of relate to him because I reached G.O.D. with Raven. And I don't really have the motivation to reach G.O.D. with my other mains. For some reason, like, I just don't know what it is. Now, I'll get into this as well. It's got something to do with ranked in the overall mechanics of the game. But even outside that... Tekken 8 just feels as though it needs some other content in terms of online modes. We can't just play ranked all the damn time. Now, I am not a very competitive player. Of course, I love to see just how good I can get at the game. And ranked for me is kind of like the competitive setting that I would try out rather than traveling for tournaments and stuff like that. If the game had other content modes that had on, for example, like even Tekken, Tekken Ball, right? Tekken Ball is a good mode. It's fun. I've played it. It's fun. But like, guys, how often do you play Tekken Ball? Like, let me know in the comments. You're like, how many times have you touched Tekken Ball after the first few months? There's just no good motivation to play that mode. So if they added like Tekken Ball Online, maybe even Tekken Ball Online ranked, I think it would be another alternative just outside of the normal Taken that we know, the no more taken rank that we all sweat with, just something, an alternative vision would be really good. And I've spoken about this as well. Add incentives to ranked, right? We need more stuff to unlock in ranked. Costumes, maybe win poses, so just something different to entice people to play ranked after they reach GOD. Now, this is outside of the competitive players, of course. I'm sure competitive players don't really care that much about stuff like that, but I know there are some. But overall, they just need more incentive to play the game. So that's one aspect of why people are frustrated with Tekken 8 in terms of ranked, just being not being able to do anything after that. The other thing is the frustration of the game. This one we've talked about in many, many videos. Asanoti, I'm sure you guys know Asanoti, one of the goats of Tekken content creation. Like this man is legendary. He recently made a post about wanting to drop Tekken and he said he's struggling to keep playing the game, right? Like, that's sad to hear, bro. And if you know Osanoti, he's been making content for a very long time. Like, this man loves the game. I feel like everyone that plays Tekken plays the game because they like it. No, no one is forced to play this game. Like, it just goes a long way. You have a long history with the game and so you just want to play the game. That's just Tekken. So, the mechanics of Tekken 8 we've talked about, like, it's just frustrating, dude. A lot of things have been dumbed down. Most of the mechanics are questionable. So let's start with just basic stuff, for example, like get-up kicks. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you can't really punish get-up kicks anymore. They used to launch back in Tekken 7, which was a very annoying mechanic to deal with. But like we can't punish them anymore, which is frustrating because you can already low parry the low, the low version of the get-up kick. So why can't we punish it when we block it as well, right? Like some things just don't make sense. So that's mechanics like that. The chip damage. Chip damage, I think, is overtuned to some extent. I don't, they don't think they have the balancing right on chip damage. Now, I like chip as a mechanic, guys. Don't get me wrong. I do like chip because it gives characters that don't really have strong ways of opening up the opponent a very good chance. Or characters with very bad laws can rely on chip damage to open up the opponent. But the thing is, it doesn't really make sense because even characters that can open up an opponent easily can still do massive amounts of chip damage. Like Raven. Raven is a very mix-up heavy character. He relies mostly on mix-ups, 50-50s in your face. But this man's chip damage is off the charts. Like his chip damage is really, really strong. Characters like Kuma do massive amounts of chip damage as well. Characters like Dragonov, Nina. Bro, Nina can open the hell out of she has hell sweeps. 
she has grabs command command grabs she has very strong laws but you can still do massive amounts of chip damage so the idea is good but the implementation needs work in my opinion the main characters like leroy have hit abilities revolving around chip damage so like, the balancing is just not there in terms of chip damage just to give you guys an example um i play a lot of marvel 3 i'm a huge marvel vs capcom 3 fan there are characters that do massive amounts of chip damage as well now i know marvel is not the best example because this game is broken out of its mind just to give you guys an idea of where i'm coming from for example chris chris in general is a character that deals massive amounts of chip damage and that's because he doesn't really have ways to open up the opponent he doesn't like he doesn't have like overheads and stuff like that he just has to rely on chip damage in this game there's a, a mechanic called advancing guard when you do an advancing guard which is basically like a push block if you do like a push block the amount of chip damage you receive is less you take le less amount of chip damage from push blocking so if Tekken 8 had something like this, I'm not, I'm not saying it should have, but they need to find a way to mitigate chip damage in this game, honestly. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, or just find a, a good way to balance around the chip damage. But as a mechanic, I do like it. The implementation is not good, in my opinion. The power crash as well. The power crash is very... Like, the power crash does have a counter now. Of course, you can throw power crashes, and the throws are unbreakable. But what I hate about power crash in Tekken 8 is the fact that they become safe when they absorb some hits. That is very annoying, and that is very, very strong. That needs to be fixed. Of course, in Tekken 7, the only counter was going low. And of course, in Tekken 7, even if the power crash absorbed any hits, it would still be punishable. If power crash hit engagers, no one loves those. That needs to be fixed as well. And then the hit mechanic. The hit mechanic is very, very overtuned. Dude, like, hit is so branded. It's ridiculous. I don't like hit engagers that give plus 17 for every character. What I wanted for hit engagers, for example, is like the king pedigree, right? King pedigree, Eddie Crouch throw dragon of crouch throw like all oh, those hit engages are good i think we need more of those not every character should get plus 17 off of a hit engager i think characters that rely on mix-ups should be getting that not every character bro like why are mishimas getting plus 17 hit engager why are characters that rely mostly on poking getting plus 17 hit engage like i don't understand why and the 50 50s again are ridiculous it's all about a coin these are things we know guys these are things we've talked about but like you just you just like you just don't get tired of talking about this issue because this plagues the game to a very bad extent the hit smash hit smash feels so strong have you ever wondered why hit smash feels stronger than the rage drive from tekken 7 tekken 7 rage drive was only accessible during rage sometimes you would die without actually even using your rage most of the times right and you had to choose between either use a rage drive or you choose your rage art because they both use the same resource which was rage the rage drives are strong don't get me wrong they're basically the same thing but rage drives were only accessible towards the end of the match like once you're in rage it was a shared resource with with with, with um the rage art as well but with like the hit smash you have access to this every single time you can do it anytime and it does massive amounts of damage like the damage from this thing is ridiculous it was dumbed down every hit smash is one button rage drives were different in tekken 7 of course so it, it removed the possibility of dropping you know it's a small change but like yeah you would still drop sometimes you have these mind farts in tekken 7 but maybe you forget your input of your rage drive and stuff like that that was removed in tekken 8 just one button going to hit one button you get 50 damage for free you get massive plus times for free you get a free mix up as well like that's taken eight the damning down everything is just annoying the developers themselves have said they wanted to lower the gap between a new player and the veteran player everyone has talked about again how taken is or has been a legacy game for the longest time even Sonic Fox in Tekken. Sonic Fox picked up Tekken in Tekken 7 and he said, okay, I'm struggling with the game because this game seems as though it's a legacy game. You have to have played the game for a long time, right? That's not the case anymore in Tekken 7. Now, don't get me wrong, Tekken 8 is still complex. Tekken in general is still a very complex game. You have to put in the time, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the effort. But like the bridge or the barrier of entry has been lowered in this game new players can do relatively well compared to like even veteran players like it's very very easy in this game so hit engagers give you plus 17 hit smash gives you plus and free mix up even the hit dash gives you plus so like everyone has access to quick plus frames now in Tekken 8 even characters whose archetype is not based around plus frames every character can have this so that's another issue that has bothered a lot of Tekken players me inclusive now hit can be fixed 
it's only the first year of Tekken 8. We still have a lot of like years and seasons to come. So the time Tekken 7 went to massive changes was back in season 3 when they brought new moves. They gave almost everyone like ridiculous war carry. They brought the damage nerf. They, they I think they added like four more points of health. That was like a massive change to the mechanics of the game. And I think Tekken 8 will undergo that. It's just a matter of time. Because I think the complaints we will get to Namco, honestly, at this point, a lot of people are not happy with the direction of the game. This also brings me to Heihachi. A lot of people are not happy with how Heihachi has been changed. And honestly, I do feel the same way. They've made him into a stance character, which is too early to tell, of course. But there is content of Heihachi. His move lists are out. You can see how the character works. And it's just Reina, guys. It's just Reina with a very busted install. But his laws are still bad. But that doesn't matter. It's just basically how the character has been changed. Which brings me back to the idea of dumbing down the game. So there are some characters like Law. Law's DSS was changed. You can just go into DSS by pressing forward now. So it's very easy to do. But if you're a veteran player, you can still do the back forward to go into DSS and get just frame inputs that do like five more points of damage. Like Legend Kick, for example, if you do back forward, gives you five more points of damage compared to the regular version of just forward into, into Legend Kick. So this was a very good change to law, for example. So, like, why not make this a standard for every character? Like, why do you get rid of Heihachi Omen in general? Why can't you keep the Omen there for the veteran players to enjoy, right? Just make it the same. Let Just Frame Omen give more damage than regular Omen. Make the regular Omen easier to do than the Just Frame Omen. Stuff like that. But everything has just been removed in total. And it just, it hurts. Because Mishimas in general have had a high skill ceiling. It takes... It took months of practice, took, like, it took experience to get good with Mishimas, guys. You had to invest so much in the character. But like right now, everything is just easy. Jin is easy. Everyone in their grandmother can use Jin, go into heat and do an electric. It comes out as a normal, you know, perfect electric. It's not, it's not fun, right? It removes the, the high investment you would put in the character, getting good with the character, you know. So stuff like that, I don't understand what they did with Heihachi. It's just Reina. Maybe they just made an impulse to bring back Heihachi at the last minute because honestly, it did seem as though Reina did replace Heihachi. This character is very similar with Heihachi. Of course, she did come with stances. So what I don't, what I don't understand is why would you give Reina stances and then bring back Heihachi, then give Heihachi stances as well, right? So the idea is just very weird. Everyone is complaining about the install mechanic now. Every character seems to have an install. The last three DLC characters, Eddie had an install, Lydia had an install install with her stocks he actually has a very busted install as well so i do like the idea of hit outside hit smash hit engager and hit dash it adds depth to the character having their own special mechanic during hit i do enjoy that i do like that but like this thing with about installs i don't know man i just hope it's not the standard for every character going forward right now in the game and then it brings us lastly to the topic of is Tekken 8 better than Tekken 7? This has been a huge debate recently. I even made a poll just to see where everyone's mind is at. Now, this one is a very difficult one because honestly, Tekken 7 was not all roses. Like Tekken 7 went through a very rough state. And you guys have to keep in mind, Tekken 8 is way bigger than Tekken 7 was at launch. Tekken, Tekken 7 was coming off of Tekken Tag, bro. Like Tekken at that time was just a, a game for veteran players. People that really loved Tekken were the only ones playing Tekken 7 at the time. Even the evil entrants for the first year were really low. I think it was just below 500 or 400. Tekken 7 was in a very bad state, guys. A very slow state. But Tekken 8 is riding off of the success of Tekken 7. So it's a very massive game. And that's why people are complaining about the game so early. Tekken at launch did have its issues. But because it was, it was not as big as Tekken is right now, Tekken 8 is right now, people didn't complain as much. The Tekken, the Tekken complaint started after Season 3, after they added the insane war carry. Of course, Tekken had 2Ds which were busted. Everyone had magic falls. Everyone had counter it. Low getup kicks used to launch. The war carry was insane. So Tekken 7 did have its problems as well. And Tekken 8 is no different, honestly. Ah, so it's, just, it's, a, it's just a difficult conversation, guys, right? Tekken is, it's early, guys. It hasn't even been a year. So sparking conversations about Tekken 8 versus Tekken 7, it's a very subjective debate. And there are very different factors determining which game is better. But 
you know there are things like raven for example i am a huge raven fan i love raven he is my main and i love tekken 8 raven so i'm not going to i'm not going to go back to tekken 7 and play master raven because i hate that bitch she replaced my my boy the og blade raven so i can't go back and say i'm gonna start playing tekken 7 because dude i love raven and i love t8 raven so honestly i did feel comfortable playing tekken 7 i think you had to work for your putting yourself in better positions you have to work for plus frames you can't just throw out a move and get plus frames i, I don't know you know move, you have to rely mostly on movement i'll take back dashing dealing with zafinas and kunimitsu's over this hit smash and hit stuff like oh my days like i don't know guys like what do you i don't know like how do you guys feel about the game maybe i'm tripping but it's just sad seeing how people are complaining about it and hey like it's too much guys it is too much i don't remember the last time people complained this much about the game at launch like a fighting game and taken for that matter right so I don't know it's sad to see i do love this game i have nothing against tekken 8 i will cover this game i'm still making guides for the, the entire character roster so i will cover this game i won't stop playing it but i think we need more more than ranked to play honestly we need more incentive incentives to play the game we need more different modes i know story mode is coming but everyone who plays story mode they just drop the game afterwards again how do you guys feel about the game do you personally think Tekken 7 was a better game than Tekken 8 do you think Tekken 8 is better what is your headspace right now with Tekken 8 how do you feel about Heihachi how do you feel about the cabin update still nothing on pluggers and ranked <laughs> we've talked about this in our last video but I think we have to give Namco a chance they are listening you know outside of monetization we've talked about that as well I don't want to even I don't want to even talk about monetization you guys know how I feel about that subject but it is what it is it be what it be so that's what i wanted to talk about guys in general yeah this seems to be a very hot topic right now and man just hate to see it but hopefully things do get stable and hopefully people do feel better about the game in the future so thank you so much for watching my video please check out my other taken content like subscribe and as usual take care my boys